Hi everyone. Welcome to the final episode of the Open College podcast series for this season anyway. But look, don't worry, I'll be back next year with more guests. On this episode, we have Mary McGlynn on again to speak about motivation and here's what she had to say. So hi, Exana. Uh, great to be back again and talking about, I don't know, I suppose another really important subject and it's something that keeps coming up um with 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 the students no matter what stage of of the course um they're at is how to stay motivated um and yeah so i do i talk to a lot of students who find it difficult staying motivated sometimes um you know whether it's studying from home like we all know that there's loads of distractions exam there isn't there yeah um, uh, and then, you know, if, if say, for example, a distraction, like you, you can just like go on your phone, you can turn the TV on, you can, you know, catch up on something that you missed the night before. And then that leads into then procrastinizing. So you're just putting everything off and then that leads to more kind of stress and anxiety. And then that leads to you being not as motivated. Uh, and then like... Every student that I talk to has so much going on in their lives as well, because a lot of our a lot of our students would be parents as well. So they've got families um, and, you know, a lot of our students have jobs as well. You know, so, you know, there's a lot going on in the background. It's very, very difficult to keep motivated and, uh, you know, in your course and I suppose in life in general. So today I'm just going to chat about how to build maybe some long-term motivation skills uh, that can carry you positively you know through through your studies okay. um, so as I said from talking to many students over the years they talk about the many barriers they come up against uh, when trying to keep their motivation up uh, and then th- so the first one they talk about is uh, the main barrier would be boredom, right? So I know from myself studying a course, you're not going to enjoy every single module, every single part of it. You know, you're going to find some of it boring. You're, you're going to find some of it really, really hard to engage with, you know, uh, and, and, and your mind starts wandering, doesn't it? Like you're not paying full attention there. And of course, then, that sets off your, um, you know, you're not motivated as much. Um, so, to, you know, trying to focus on boring stuff is, is, is it's quite, it's quite difficult. Uh, and, and as I said, you know, there's at least one or two modules, one or two units, even, you know, one small bit out of a module um, that, that's just not as exciting as the others. Um, so what I would advise here is to try and find some sort of emotional connection to the subject right okay. uh, and then this builds a kind of a more positive feeling towards it uh, so come up with good reasons why it is important to study it so I, i'm going to give one or two examples here so for example our our psychology students or our social care students um you know they kind of find it a bit boring and a bit of a waste of time studying statistics research all of this type of thing is like oh for goodness sake you know this is a waste of time why am i doing what's this got to do with care but Mm. actually the statistics research all of that plays a pivotal role in protecting people you know um if if that research is done properly it can tell if treatments different types of therapy is working or not you know um and this actually protects your patients. It protects your clients from harm, doesn't it? You know, it's only a good thing. So if you can start thinking that way rather than thinking, oh, these bloody statistics is just that, you know, I'm so bored. You know, if you can just try, try and find a, a more emotional connection that you care about towards the subject, you'll want to do it a bit more and it'll increase your your motivation. Um, and then one that comes up a lot is communication skills, you know, in healthcare, childcare, all this communications module. My goodness, like, why am I doing all of this? You know, that's this, that's very bitty and, and this and that. Like, I hear a lot of sort of giving out about that. Oh, yeah, that, that does the rounds it, <laughs> at the college. It does that particular one. It definitely does the rounds. Like, you know, because if, if you're studying a specific module and you're learning all about care, you're learning all about, you know, different ways to care for somebody and, and, and different things like that. And then you're learning about communications, verbal, non-verbal and stuff. You kind of think, 
well, what's this got to do with anything? But actually, it's got everything to do with everything because communication skills is the number one skill that any employer will look for in any type of, of role. Um, you know, particularly, and, and a good example would be healthcare. If you want, if you're going to work with the elderly, there's a lot of them that can't talk. Well, yeah, so, that's it. You need to put your message across like effectively in different ways. Yeah, and you need to understand what they're saying. So you need to be understanding their nonverbal behavior. So that's why you're learning all about the importance of the nonverbal behaviors in communication. Um, and then the written communication, what goes down on care plans for patients is extremely important because if you put something wrong down on, on, on the paper, uh, and, and something's prescribed, some kind of treatment or, you know, they're washed at the wrong time, they're given their medications at the wrong time, could have horrible, terrible consequences. So, you know, l- look for some element, even a small one, you know, uh, for you to care about in this module and try and look, at, you know, from another sort of point of view, look at the, look at the reasons why you're actually, why you need communication in where you're going to work even in childcare, my goodness I suppose even look at the bigger picture isn't it like that's yeah. part of like a larger course that you want to complete to get on with the career that you chose so yeah yeah absolutely absolutely so you see what I mean there Xana's finding that sort of some sort of emotional connection to mm-hmm. to to the thing that you're finding boring um now another barrier that comes up all the time um, and almost everything uh, doesn't need, not even motivation in every person's life is anxiety. So anxiety, worry, stress can have a huge effect on motivation. Yeah, it's actually one of the first things that goes if you're anxious and stressed is, is your motivation. Can uh, I actually ask you? Sorry, just to interrupt you there for a second. Do you think anxiety is something that's been around all the time? And people just didn't talk about it, or do you think it's just a fad type thing that's been going around that has been kind of well, everybody has anxiety now, do you know? That people are kind of like any bit a little bit of stress and they're like, Oh, I'm so anxious. Do you know, like it's just a like a, a turn of phrase nearly at this stage rather than just anxiety. Because you hear it on okay, so you hear it on telly all the time, people saying, Oh god, I'm so anxious, I was so busy today, but that's not angst. That's you were just stressed because you're a bit busy. Yeah, yeah. Do, do oh, you know I, what I mean? Do you think it's overused? Well, I think what's happened is um, years ago, people were just too ashamed. I think it has definitely been around forever. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think it was recognised as much years ago. The term anxiety wouldn't have been used at all, really. Maybe mm-hmm. stress, but not yes. anxiety. Um, and, and, and people were ashamed to talk about it, mm-hmm. you know. Um, like years ago, I think about my mother, uh, you know, raising six of us, and yeah. she just had, to, you know, she just had to sit and get on with it. Like, you know, I'm sure, like, she wasn't aware that yes, you know, it's okay if you're feeling that way. It's okay if you want to talk about it. It's okay to ask for help. Like people years ago were expected to just get on with things, and um, like I see people in that bracket having loads of health issues in later life. You know, oh, yeah, definitely. All, yeah, because of because of all the stress um, and, and not being able to talk about it and the accumulating anxiety of life. And I think what's happened now is um, it's actually OK to talk about it more. So people are actually talking about it more freely. Mm-hmm. Maybe, I don't know, it's been overused a bit. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm sure um, people do have a reason to be saying they're anxious or, or whatever. And, and And it's about again a bit of psychoeducation and, and and explaining what's happening to them and you know saying it's actually you know it's okay to talk about it and uh, to just deal with it in the right way see people are more aware that they can talk about it but they need to start learning the right ways to deal with it as well yeah I agree with you there it's all well and good to identify that you have it but you need to learn to cope with it too ah yeah absolutely um and yeah, and like I find it with a lot of students that, you know, for example, you know, if they've got a difficult assignment coming up, right, yeah. that the worrying starts. Oh God, this is an this is a module, you know, I'm not I'm not really sure about, you know, where do I start? Oh, my God, and then they the start to worry, mm-hmm. and then they start, you know, the sleep is affected. 
every time they think about it, they start feeling anxious. You know, the you know the sweaty palms and that the heart rate starts going up. They're they're pure signs of anxiety, you know. And I've gone through this so many times, as I'm sure you have, example, example, yeah. sorry, with previous studies and um and and and. It's a, Anxiety is actually a kind of a pain. Your your brain deals with it, and it's, it's the same kind of threat as a pain. So, um, it tries to find some kind of short term strategy to avoid that pain. So you try to stop thinking about it. You distract yourself. Um, anxiety feelings go, but that's just for now. But by avoiding it, we lose our motivation, don't we, to do it? Yeah. You know, it has a direct effect on on everything especially motivation so you know and th- and this happens a lot so um but the first thing i would say here is accept that you're anxious it's okay to feel that way my goodness like it's it's taken me a long time to actually say to myself when i am anxious now yes i am anxious it's okay mm-hmm. because we tend to go the other way don't we like when we're anxious it's like oh there's something wrong with something not no it's just your brain. It's the, it's just the way. It's a natural reaction in your brain to to a threat, to stress. You know. So the first thing I'd say is accept it. It's a lot of things in life if we accept what's happening, a lot of the stress goes away. You know. Um, and then you know, as I mentioned before, practice your breathing techniques when you do feel like that. And this works very simply. Breathe in for the count of seven, out for the count of eleven. You know. You just automatically calm down. Uh, Remind yourself as well of why you're actually doing the course in the first place. Um, because this gets overshadowed by the stress again, by the anxiety. You know, when you're worried about it, all these assignments, all these, you know, maybe you have an exam, maybe you have like work placement, all on top of one another. The anxiety, the stress and all that overwhelming kind of clouds over the main reasons why you were doing the course in the first place you know so reach again out to that that emotional connection you have to your course you know and that just remind yourself of the excitement at the beginning the reasons why you're doing it you know you want to move up the ladder at work you want to start a new career you want to provide for your family you know you want to provide more opportunities for yourself things like this and then that 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 really helps um, as well. I've noticed with some students, if you remind them of that, it kind of really cheers them up a bit. Um, you know, take time out to relax. I know I keep saying that, but geez, don't have a full schedule all day of work, 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 work. You know, um, take time out to relax a bit, and don't forget your your you know your physical needs, your sleeping, your eating, and your exercise. That would be the, you know the three main. Make sure your 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 sleep hygiene is good. Um, make sure that you're eating properly. Like I've made some changes to my diet there recently. You know I've cut out um, wheat, and uh, I've I've cut out um, lactose from my diet. You know dairy products and everything. The change in mood, the change in um, energy levels. Do you know what? It's funny that you say dairy because I've I've heard a few times that um, no, I didn't actually. It's not proper research. I don't think it was just people saying this. I've heard it in a few places, so don't quote me on it. It'll be changing your life <laughs> now or anything. But apparently, dairy is not meant to be consumed by humans, and it's meant to be really bad for us. But we just eat it because it's just been that way all the time. Yeah, I remember reading something similar that it's not really like it wouldn't have been a natural um, nu- nutrition consumption like years and years yeah. years ago. It, it it wouldn't have been like um, so. Yeah, yeah. That's you, bad. I you, never knew that because like I love a bit of cheese now. Oh, so. <laughs> do I? And eggs, eggs are actually okay. It's everything else. Like the it's, I get lactose free everything now, um, other than eggs and and. The t- the difference in mood, the difference in um, energy levels, I just noticed straight away. Um, so whatever they do, it's, and it's, so, it's just about looking at your diet, cutting out things, seeing how you feel, maybe introducing those things back maybe two months later, see how you feel, and if you're feeling crap again, well, it's obviously you've got an intolerance to it. Your body doesn't want it. Yeah, you know, it's not doing it any good. So, you know, you cut those things out. Um, and, of course, exercise as well. You know, whatever you're into, whatever way you know you get your physical exercise make sure you're getting a wee bit in every day straight away you know if you're looking after yourself you're going to feel less anxious and your motivation 
automatically increases. You know, you're going to wake up feeling refreshed and straight away you're going to look at life a lot better. Um, and, you know, you're going to look at the, uh, the doing an assignment and you're going to go, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm well able for this instead of being anxious about it. Um, another barrier then is uh, what I come across is uncertainty, like the uncertainty, sorry. So students don't understand what they're supposed to do. And this is especially true of students coming back studying after years and years being away from from college been away from studying you yes. know um, education changes so fast you can't blame them do you know oh yeah yeah definitely or you know even if you're a student and, and English isn't the first your first language and things oh, yeah. like you know difficult to understand the referencing very very difficult to understand um, and, and 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 you know um be, be certain about things so you know, this can feel overwhelming, can't it? I, I, I can just take over, you know. Um, but but just remember, right, you come to co- you're not supposed to know everything. You come to a course to learn. So don't be afraid to ask as many questions as possible to the tutors, the lecturers. Send an email, join forums if they're available to you. You know, I know we do drop in sessions, weekly drop in sessions for our courses with the tutors attend these do you know if you feel support like you, you'd be shocked at the amount of students that i talk to and they're afraid to even contact a tutor like they're too shy or they're worried they might sound stupid or you know they might sound oh well they'll think that i don't know what i'm talking about absolutely not it's the complete opposite like you know you're you're not supposed to know everything you come to the course to learn everything you know even the referencing everything to do with it so ask Feel free to ask any questions. There's no question silly at all, you know. Um, and then, of course, you know, another another um, barrier would be like we're creatures of habit. Like if we're, unfortunately, like if, if, if we're used to sort of hours of inactivity, you know, if you're used to getting up and you're, you know, not doing much and, um, and things like that, you'll start in the course and having to do all these things will be quite daunting and that you know it's a big change in your life and you know yeah. people people kind of deal with change um in different ways some of them find very you know difficult so um and then what happens is uh you know you only engage with with assignments and everything at deadlines so you're panicking at the end of it and you're trying to get everything done and you know within a matter of like a week or two and that's that like that doesn't work at all. You're putting so much stress in yourself. So if you if you engage with academic work more regularly, even short intervals, you do, you become more motivated, you know. Um, so absolutely do not wait until the last second to get all your work done. Just tackle everything as soon as you get it. If, if, if an assignment or project isn't due for two, three months, start it straight away. You know, have your plan. Um, start, you know, doing out a plan per per week. What you're going to do? You're going to do your research the first week, second week, third week. You're going to start maybe doing your introduction. Third, fourth, fifth week. You're going to go into your main body of your assignment. You know, fifth week. Then you're wrapping up and things like that. You know, if you have a plan like that, it gets you out of um sort of the habit of leaving everything to the last minute. Oh, definitely. Like I can even relate to that in because I'm doing a course now myself and that's something I used to do when I was <laughs> 10 years ago in college doing my first degree. Um, I used to just leave it all till the like the last week. I was like, oh, I'll get to it. It's grand. But that was me like young and sprightly, you know. <laughs> now yeah. I know better, obviously. So I started doing it much sooner. And I started doing like what you said. First week I did one thing. Next week I did another thing, and everything just kind of fell into place. And then by the end of it, I was just reading over it and submitting. Whereas like some classmates I saw, and the panic. Oh God! Yeah. But look. Oh. So exactly. I just I agree. Yeah. No. No. Totally. Totally. Gosh, I was the same when I was when I was very young at college. Yeah, you do. You know, you just leave everything. You know, well, I did anyway, like yourself, leave everything to the last minute as well. And you just you learn from it, though, don't you? And 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 that's what I keep trying to re- reiterate. Probably in other other podcasts I've done as well. You never fail at anything. You always learn, mm-hmm. you know, change your mindset to 
OK, you know, I didn't do quite as well in that presentation or whatever. OK, what have I learned from it? What can I apply to the next one? You know, instead of um, Jesus thinking, you know, you've got that's terrible and I'm, I've failed at life. This is awful. You know, people really catastrophize everything really isn't that bad. You're just you're learning all the time. Yeah, I also find people take it really hard when they say, for example, a student is like, the best student they are in secondary school but then when they get to college obviously things are very different in college and they may not be the a student or whatever whatever they were so i think that hits them really hard as well um yeah that's 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 it and 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 really they should be prepared for that at, at secondary school you know to go in and that should be part of the preparation you know before you go in to, to university um you know, they should give proper career advice and it should be part of that curriculum to just teach them, look, you know, teach them all about college life, how it's so different, how you're going to be on your, you're going to have to look after yourself. People even find looking after themselves difficult, Exana, and that sure. has a effect on, on, the, on their course. So not only that, you know, um, a subject that you, that you learned about at school, the subject matter of that will be completely different at university. Oh, 100 percent. And then on top of everything, like you're so used to going in school, like your mom's there looking after you and, you know, all that kind of jazz. Mm -hmm. But then when you go to college, like you have to juggle everything and be an adult. So you're studying and looking after yourself and whatever else you might be doing. And there's yeah. just a lot to, to do there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good, really, you know, they should be a bit there in, in, in career guidance on how to prepare yourself for college. Um, and also, I suppose, the parents as well to prepare your child, you know, this is what's going to happen and be prepared, you know, just talking about expectations, I suppose, and getting them, you know, ready for college really, really helps and makes a huge difference instead of just getting there and going, oh, my God, this is a shock, like it's horrible. Yeah. Um, OK. And uh, I suppose another an, another main barrier would be like people have so many other priorities, don't they? <clears throat> Excuse me, we're all so busy and we've so much going on. Like everybody that I talk to, Oksana these days are just so busy, you know. Um, and you know, obviously, if you've got a family, children, they're going to take priority. Mm. And you know, studying may go down the list of priorities sometimes. This is perfectly understandable you know it doesn't mean that you don't care about your course um you know accept these situations that come up talk, you know anything could come up in a you know family situations anything even if you don't have you know any if you don't have children anything could come up in your personal life talk to the tutor uh they will understand you know they're probably parents themselves or you know they've probably gone through something similar personally in their own life at some point um, so that's that's what we're there for. Talk, talk to your tutor, talk to your lecturer. And, you know, there's extensions available for assignments. You know, you can redo exams and so on. It really isn't the end of the world. Um, so, um, you know, and then sometimes we don't notice, you know, we have priorities that don't really deserve to sort of pull away from from our studies. And And with that, I'm talking about you know, if you're used to, and I hate giving out about phones and scrolling and things like that too much, because I can see the benefits of, of, of phones as well. But sometimes it, it, it can distract us, you know, too much, like, you know, playing too many computer games, social media, streaming, you know, uh, buying clothes online. Not guilty of that at all. <laughs> no, no, me neither. Uh, never, never do <laughs> such a thing. <laughs> Now, these, these kind of habits actually rob us off our motivation. They completely rob us because we're in and we're just, you know, we're not really thinking about much. We're not using our brains much because, you know, we really aren't. It's, it's, it's just a kind of a... Oh, especially with the way social media is now is that everything is on demand and instant. Yeah. So because studying takes time, you're not going to go for that, obviously, but the quick hit from social media. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And... Uh, you know, what you need to do is just to take control of that, to just kind of step back and go, right, what am I actually doing here? What am I gaining from this? You know, if you're not gaining anything from it, if it's not doing you much good, 
take control of it and say, right, that's it. I'm just going to cut this down. I'm going to make a schedule. I'm going to use my time more productively here. You know, I'm going to use this time to study more, maybe go to the library, maybe do some maybe online research on something to do with my course um, and things like that. So just, it's about taking back control because that, that that's what these things are trying to do. They're sh- trying to take away some of your control, really, because it's gone whenever you're on, whenever you're really, really kind of stuck into some of these things in social media. So take back that control and do out a proper, you know, a kind of a better schedule. Um, and you'll see straight away that your motivation will be, it'll shoot up, you know. Yeah. Um, and then just one more barrier I want to talk about is um, a lot of people feeling tired, lack of energy. Um, you know, if your physical well-being if your physical or mental well-being is low, motivation naturally goes down. You know, you have lack of energy and, um, you know, your sleep is, 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 you know, interrupted. People have, as I said, so much going on in their lives and then they're bringing all this baggage to bed and then they can't sleep. And that has a huge effect on motivation, you know. So, as I said, just look, you know, look at your life, first of all, and see, you know, what what what's taken up. A lot of your time here that's really a waste of time you know you might be a yes person saying yes to everything when you really do not have to say yes you, you need to put barriers up um, and not barriers but you need to be you need to be comfortable saying no to things or to just say look I just don't have time for that at the minute I need to get this done maybe two months down the line I can help you with that or whatever um, and it's about kind of saying to yourself that's actually okay. I'm looking after myself, not not everybody else. Like, you know, you need to look after yourself. Um, and then look at your sleep. You know, if you're taking ages to sleep, if you're waking up a lot at night, if you're only getting a few hours, then you're really worrying a lot and have lots of things on your mind. Talk more to people during the day. Talk to a therapist if it's, if it's something that's really bothering you. Write a journal before sleep. I know that that helps so many people even without having to speak to a therapist, this little thing alone before you go to sleep, just write in a journal. Uh, focus on that, eat well, as I say, exercise and stay stay hydrated as well is very important. And I was reading a really good um, article recently as well about sleep, CBT. Um, and, and, and what it said was people go to bed worrying about sleep and thinking that they're not going to sleep. Right. So what the sleep CBD does is it kind of retrains your brain into thinking you're going to go to bed and you're going to have the most relaxing deep sleep ever. And what I did was sometimes, geez, I have trouble sleeping myself at certain points of, you know, life worries, different things. And I did. I try. I actually tried it. I actually I went to bed and I just thought. Right, I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to have the nicest sleep. This is going to be such a brilliant sleep. I tried to uh, change my whole mindset, and I did my normal nightly um, sleep uh, meditation. I have saved, and uh, I just fell asleep straight away. It actually worked. <laughs> no, oh, that's, that's good though. Sure, whatever works. Do you know, like I'm all, I'm always like pro. Do whatever you need to do to mind yourself. Do you know. Well, this is it, and just be simple. Th- now, it mightn't work for everybody, but just go to bed with a different mind frame, thinking you are going to sleep. Okay, good night, everyone. I'm going to have a lovely sleep now. Instead of thinking, good night, everyone. Oh, God, I'm not going to sleep. This is going to be ter- I'm going to be tossing and turning all night. Do you know? Yeah, you're setting yourself up for it nearly. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, there's breathing exercises. There's body scans. There's progressive muscle relaxing, you know, tensing each part of your body, each muscle, and, and relaxing them you know, before sleeping, different meditations, all of that will help, you know, with sleeping to reduce your tiredness and sluggishness, which will automatically increase your motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, so I suppose I want to talk a bit now about um, when, when things actually go wrong in your course, you know, what to do. Um, so no matter if you're doing a course over three to four years, if you're doing a course even over three months, two months, six months, whatever it is, you know, a few things are bound to just not go to plan. You know, um, like I have a lot of students extremely upset, you know, 
thinking, God, there's too much work here. You know, I'm going to get a bad, you know, grade, you know, at the, the courses and what I was expecting it to be. Um, you know, and there's all these things that kind of really affect their motivation because they, they start off thinking this is amazing. I'm going to do now what I really want to do. And then all of a sudden then they're kind of, you know, shocked with the content, shocked with the amount of work that they have to do. Maybe something happens in their personal life and things like that. So uh, I suppose the way we respond to setbacks um, often depends on the expectations we place on ourselves. So if you expect never sort of to get anything wrong, you know, to always get high grades, um, you know, to never make a mistake, you know, to always have loads of time to get everything done. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, any one of these things going wrong can be a complete disaster then, can't it? And, and your brain, you think, Jesus, this is awful. Um, and, and and the truth is, like, mistakes and things like that, they're in, in, in any course, um, you know, they're a crucial part of learning. Learning takes place more after trying something, getting it wrong, learning from it. Uh, you know, and then trying it again. So, you know, something goes wrong, like, you know, you get a low grade, you, you know, you're you're finding it difficult finding research, you know, you've, maybe you've quoted the wrong references, things like that. It's okay. You know, mistakes are a crucial part of learning. If you don't, actually, if you don't make mistakes, if you don't kind of fail at anything, you're never really learning, you know. Well, that's true. Any, anything new anyway you know you're just no. kind of along at the same pace um and then you know if if expect mistakes expect that life will get in the way sometimes um you know expect that if you know from the start right i'm starting this new course it's all brilliant however you know expect that sometimes you're going to be overwhelmed you know Sometimes um, that things are going to get on top of you, you know, nowhere to go for support, you know, talk to your tutors, um, have plans, have, you know, your resources there that, that, that you can just reach for when these things happen, you know, rather than kind of going in and, and sort of being a bit naive about it and thinking nothing's going to go wrong. I'm going to get everything done on time. I'm going to get high grades. My family are all going to be OK. You know, I'm going to have loads of time to do it. That's not very realistic, is it? No. So, yeah. So if you have kind of proper expectations, I suppose, on yourself, you'll you'll actually be more motivated. You you, you won't get disappointed as much, you know, and, and, and your motivation won't be, you know, as affected. Um, you know, just, yeah, just accept it and, 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 and just take control of that. Um, so another thing that can go wrong as well is uh, a lot of students ruminate. They sort of think too much about things, overthinking. Oh, geez, I know I'm, def- I'm definitely guilty of that, as I'm sure you are as well, Alexana. Yes, <laughs> we don't need to get into that. I'll probably overthink it as well. <laughs> overthinking everything. Oh, my goodness. So going over the same thing over and over again, you know, focusing on what's gone wrong instead of sort of taking positive action, you know. Uh, keep you know keep thinking of how awful it is how awful everything is and how awful it feels and how and then that that as I say you know you start catastrophizing don't you you know everything's terrible um, and even if you do think about ways to help and moving forward and um, because we're so emotionally overwhelmed it's hard to know where to start and it can spiral out of control, like say, for example, you have a presentation coming up and you've had a bad experience with this in the past. Um, you know, it can lead to really, really bad rumination and thinking and thinking, oh, God, I have this presentation to do next week. It's gone. I'm going to look so silly. You know, I'll forget my words. You know, I'm going to, oh, geez, I'm going to fail the subject. You know, I'm never, I, and then this goes on to really horrible, it's like really bad catastrophes. I'm, I'm never good enough. No one likes me. I'm a complete fool. And, you know, it really spirals out of control, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so, again, it's about taking back that control. Ask yourself this key question. How are these thoughts helping you? Right? If these thoughts aren't helping you, you're ruminating. All right? Ask yourself better better questions. So, you know, are these thoughts helping me? No. How can you actually learn 
you know, from prior disappointments. You know, prior, you know, if, if, the, if the presentation didn't go so well, you didn't fail at it. You're learning. So what did you learn from it? You know, um, and again, you know, what resources, what people are there that, 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 that can help you? And, that, you know, have your resources there, have the people there that you can ring, you know, your tutors, your friends and everything for support. And you'll be amazed at, you know, the amount of other people that's in the same boat. And, you, you you know, when you talk to somebody that's gone through the same thing, you're like, oh, it's not only me, this person feels the same. And then you can help one another, you know, form groups, talk to your tutor. All these things are really, really helpful. And, and, and straight away, then your motivation goes up again. Um, and then I suppose another thing is um, the importance of meaning. And I suppose what I mean by that is one of the things that can go wrong is uh, you you know if, if you don't really care about the subject. Do you know what I mean? What we, we kind of briefly spoke about it before, but if you care about a subject and feel that you can perform well, it's easier to maintain motivation. And um, if you're struggling with motivation, sort of you know ask yourself these questions. So do, do you find the topic meaningful? So do you, do you actually care about it? Do you find it interesting? right and if not how can you make it meaningful for yourself so as i said before sort of briefly you know think about why you're actually doing it and try to have emotional connection towards it you know like the statistics being um really really important in 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 uh, a caring profession um communication skills the one that we all dread but that's really really important in all aspects of our lives um and there's two different types um, of motivation when, when, when it comes to meaning. So there's intrinsic motivation, okay? So this means that you're doing things for, you know, you're doing the course for reasons that are internally important to you. You're studying the subject because you care about the subject, you know. You're, you're focus driven by enjoyment of the subject, you know, fulfillment of studying the subject. And you really enjoy doing the assignments, you know, you're, you're learning and developing ideas, you know, you're trying to understand. Like, I remember courses that I did when I was younger and, you know, I really, I wasn't intrinsically motivated at all. I was just doing it because I thought I had to do it. Oh, yeah. Or because right. somebody said... I think you'd be good at this. Not not what I thought I'd be good at, what somebody else thought I'd be good at. Um, and you were just doing it just to get on with it and pass it, and that was it. Yeah. You know, you're you're. I, I wasn't intrinsically. When I compare that now to courses that I'm doing now, I kind of realise there's a huge difference. There's a huge oh, 100%. difference. Oh, hundred percent. Huge. But difference. at that at that age though, when you're just leaving school, you're what seventeen, eighteen. Mm. Sure. What do you like? I'm not trying to anybody who's 17 and 18 that might be listening I'm not trying to put anybody down when I say this but like what do you really know at that stage not that much I'm just comparing myself now I hadn't a clue about anything I just said like I picked an arts degree to do that's like the laziest cop out I could have done because what can you really do after an arts degree you could teach do you really want to teach I don't know sure I'll go for it that was kind of like my my train of thought at the time Oh, I know. I, I totally understand that. And again, that's bad career advice. There was no proper career advice there. At, no, at, no. I would assume. No. Yeah, because we spoke about this before. No, there wasn't at, 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 at your school. No, not at all. Um, we had a career guidance counsellor, but she, and I don't know if she's there or not anymore. Um, But in my experience, she wasn't great. No, no. And this, and this is, look, that's the story all, all over. And it's happening even now. Um, It's, it's it's awful because at that as you say very young age you're how are you supposed to know without guidance and advice it's a huge you're, you're you know you're leaving secondary school and it's a huge part of your life you're you're going to start your working life in a few years um and i don't think at that very young age you're supposed to 100 percent know i think that you know you, you you should have i suppose a few options number one and then something that you can fall back on, maybe something you can fall back on again. And it's about oh, discovering all that 
and it's about making exciting for the students, directing them in the sa- in, in, in the right places to look, uh, giving them the right advice, you know, on on their careers, um, and you know, if that is not available at secondary schools even now, I would advise students to even set up a few meetings outside of school with a professional career advisor to try and help you with it because it's so so important and as you say you know you do an arts degree a lot of students go and do a business degree because they haven't a clue what to do and actually those business is one of the courses that there's um the most dropout oh i didn't know that yeah yeah because of the because the students don't know what they want to do so look i just do business and maybe this will open up a few opportunities and then well that's it you do a generic something or other hoping that by the time you finish your three or four years you'll know what you want to do yeah 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 and I mean it's no you you really do need to be properly prepared and and, and start the career advice I suppose as, as, as early as possible maybe after your junior cert to start really really thinking about it um and uh you know if 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 we're more intrinsically motivated we learn more and to a higher quality as well you know, and we also have a better well-being and mental health. So if you can actually find something that you're going to be intrinsically motivated to do, that you're going to want to do it for your own reasons, something that you really want to do, that you're really going to enjoy, it's actually going to have a positive effect on all of your life, you know, not just your motivation, your mental health and well-being, you know. Um, So start, you know, start asking yourself, what do you actually care about? Um, and this is at any stage of your life, if you're in a career now that you know you're not happy in, if you're doing a course that you're not happy in, that's fine as well, actually. You haven't failed there, you know, you're just growing. Um, you know, what what do you actually care about? What 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 are you passionate about? Um what you know what what are you doing when you're happiest? Uh, you know, what what are your strengths? Um and then if you can apply all of the, and, and you know, t- take your time doing this. You can't just do this like over a day or two. Take your time and, you know, research and things and take your time with this. And if you can combine all of this together to a course or a career, you're, you're going to be so much, you're going to be so much happier, you know. Definitely. I think that's, this is just my opinion, that this might apply to people who are a bit older because when you're younger, mm. you don't have that much, because we were just talking about it there as well, but you don't have that much life experience to draw on what you actually like to do. Yeah. I remember just myself when I was in secondary school, like, what did I like to do? Hang out with my friends, go shopping and swimming. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, so what would I have been? An Olympic swimmer, a personal yeah, shopper yeah. or something else? Like, it's just, yeah. I th- yeah. Do you know what I actually think is a good idea for, especially when you're younger in, and in secondary school? I think TY is a great idea. They oh, send you out on yeah. work experience, all these things, and that's not compulsory. But looking back on it now at my age, I think it should be because it's actually such good experience prior to your leaving cert when oh, you're definitely. actually trying to pick something. Yeah, definitely. Transition year. And that's why it w- was put in place, I suppose, for students to be that year older when they leave as well uh so that yeah. they're one year more mature and have more time to think about that as well yeah, yeah. a also, year out in my opinion is also a good idea definitely definitely go off and travel if you can I don't know even get a part-time job somewhere because even if you're say like out of school you'll probably w- be working maybe as a cashier or something in a shop or f- some kind of retail position mainly isn't it that's what students do you still are exposed to other business areas that you might be interested in, like, I don't know, merchandising or marketing or management or something, you know, something like that. Um, mm-hmm. Depending on what shop you work in, maybe you decide that you're working, say you're working in a chemist, maybe you decide, oh, Jesus, I actually like the, the pharmaceutical science of it all. And then, you know, continue on from, from yeah. there. And, yeah, and it, it organically happens from there. Yeah, you know, exactly. That, you know, that's it. Um, you know, you'll you'll meet people. You might meet somebody randomly at a meeting or whatever, and they might be do have some kind of job, and you're thinking, "Geez, I like their job." You know, yeah, I like what they're doing, and this is it. And this is what you know. You're growing all the time, and you know, you you will have the average four or five different careers in a lifetime now. That's that's just the way it is now. Um, so all this pressure with the leaving cert, all this, all this. <laughs> you know, pressure of you're going to college and you have to decide. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, 
and it's 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 too much. It's it's yeah. too much for that for that age group. But anyway, I could chat about that all day. Well, we'll talk Same. about that on another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely <laughs> options and that kind of jazz. Yeah. Um, and I suppose, look, I just want to end up by talking about um, try, for students trying not to get stuck at what they're doing, because sometimes students have the best intentions, you know, to get things done, uh, but they just can't get started, you know, and this is very common. It's an understandable problem, uh, but there's way to help. So ways to help. So so what's happening is uh, sometimes, you know, people procrastinate, don't they, Oksana? Like there's a lot of uh, procrastination happening um, especially if you're doing a course from home I suppose it's 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 easier to procrastinate there isn't it rather than if you have to actually get up and go to college and things like that so oh, um, more distractions at home there's more distractions so you know you're procrastinating you know you're worrying about the work you're feeling overwhelmed by it maybe you're bored by it unmotivated you know maybe you're afraid of it you know in case you you know that fear of failure uh, and then you start to procrastinate, you know, you put put things off until later, but never quite get around to it. Um, and again, it it's all about taking back the control. So think about the, the, the procrastination as this, uh, this thing that's trying to take control away. So you're taking back control and, uh, you know, break down your study into smaller chunks, smaller study blocks. Um, you know, don't leave everything to the last minute. As we spoke about before, you know, the importance of having a schedule, really, really important. You know, do your schedule from the very, very start of the course, what you're going to be doing each week. Um, and it, celebrate your achievements, no matter how small they are. You know, I have to have something to look forward to. I, 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 this really works for me now, you know. Um, you know, say, for example, you know, you, 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 know, you finish... Um, you know, an assignment or whatever it is. Maybe you order in your favourite takeaway meal, have a glass of wine with that. Maybe you order something online that you've been looking at for a long time. Um, maybe you have the chance now to visit a friend or, or whatever it is, you know, whenever lockdown uh, finishes completely, you know, you can... You, you know, you can visit a friend, you can have a wee night, you can, you can have a night away in a hotel, have a spa treatment, whatever it is. Always have something to look forward to. Um, as kind of like a reward, you know, mm -hmm. and just don't keep putting things off, you know, and uh, and I keep coming back as well to support, know your support systems around you. Um, and then the, 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 there's another one as well. Um, people get stuck a lot is the perfectionist, right? Yeah. And I, I, I just keep saying that perfectionism... It doesn't exist, you know, being perfect. What is perfect? No, it means different things to different people. So if you're if you're trying to be this perfect person all the time, you are going to be under a tremendous amount of stress trying to reach this perfectionism the whole time, not really getting there. And, and maybe in your eyes, getting there and then thinking, right, what do I have to do next? What do I have to do next? It's 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 something that I see all the time. Students, clients, it's 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 quite damaging. Um, so with students, you know, no matter how good their work is, they're still in their eyes still not good enough. Um, you know, it, it, it makes them aim for something that's really impossible. Uh, it can cause some students not even to submit work. God, I, I, I like I know some students that won't attempt even to do something in case they fail it. Would you say perfectionism is a form of anxiety? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, if not a form, if it's a cause um, okay. of, of, of anxiety, trying to, you know, trying to be perfect all the time. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's mad how people see it as, um, well, maybe maybe opinions are changing kind of more in recent times. Now it's viewed more like a flaw, whereas before I feel like it was more viewed as like a positive yeah, uh, how and would you, you say like yeah, just like just as a positive. As a positive, and you remember the main one of the main things, um, a, an interview question like, oh, if somebody asks you about your your weaknesses, oh, what, answer them by saying that you're a perfectionist and stuff like that, and you you know you you you, that, you do you know that, yeah. that 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 was the main, and no, absolutely not, do you know it's uh, it's it's. 
I would leave that out of an interview altogether. I wouldn't even mention perfectionism, you know, um, because it's it, it actually stops people from taking risks. Um, it can be an enemy of ambition. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to let yourself do something in case you fail. It's taken away your ambition. It's taken away your motivation. As it stops people from taking risks, learning new things, uh, not, you know, wanting to try anything new um, in case they're not perfect at it right away. Um, focus, try, you know, focusing on the fear of not doing well, uh, you know, getting the right grade. You know, it's, it's, it's an awful, it's an awful mind state. So look, be willing to fail every now and again. Embrace the learning that comes with it. Mm-hmm. All right. And I keep saying you, you come to college to learn no matter what course you are there to learn all of these new things. You're not supposed to know any of it. Why would you even be bothered going to college if you knew everything? So you can and you won't learn all of these things straight away. You have to try maybe not do so well. Try again and try again you know, until and un- until you get it right. That's it. Even if you finish a course with like a one one or all A's or whatever it is, that doesn't mean you're amazing at your subjects. It just means you're amazing at what you have learned so far. Or yeah. so do lecturers think or whatever it is. Don't they say that in order to become an expert in something, i.e. what well, perfect in something, whatever that may be, you need to have like ten thousand hours of experience or something crazy like that doing this one thing on the daily for a certain amount of hours and then you're considered like expert level apparently yeah oh and and you know it, and it's that's it's just so much pressure it's just it's so much pressure and it's about changing the mind frame on that yes like you need all these you need all these hours but in the middle of it i might you know not do as well at something you know life might happen you know i yeah. might not you know pass one of the assignments it's fine I'll probably get another opportunity to do it and um, you can usually resubmit you know there's it, it, it really isn't the end of the world and it doesn't mean that you care any less about your subject that you're you know you're you're not as good as other students and things like that it doesn't mean any of that you know um, and it's that devil on your shoulder again isn't it uh, saying oh you know you're you're not good enough or whatever change that devil that's sitting on your shoulder with your best friend, with your partner, what would they be saying? Of course you could do it, you know? Uh, Of course you're good enough, you know? Of course, you know, the the work that you're producing is good enough. Um, And just allow yourself, you know, allow yourself to develop. And um, that kind of perfectionism will start to ease a little bit, that, that, you know, that worry. Um, and uh, yeah, and I suppose I want to just mention three suppose, final tips on on staying motivated. And um, there's been a bit of research uh, which has identified um, a few tips, you know, to stay motivated, especially if you're trying to change your habits or you know trying to take up more healthy behaviours. And um, so the first one is tell everybody that you know what you're what you're doing. OK, because willpower, although you might have loads and loads of willpower uh, and you think, geez, I can do this. Sometimes it's just not enough. So if you tell everybody that you're doing the course and you have that support behind you and you have that praise that you need, like sometimes, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you talk to somebody and go, geez, I'm finding this very difficult. The other person at the other end of the phone will validate, yeah, oh, geez, I, I hear you, but look, look how, how well you're doing. Look at the challenges that you've had previously in, in your life and how you've overcome those. I mean, this is just an assignment. Of course you can do it. Of course you can do this course. Um, you know, and if, if, if you tell people and you're talking to them, you want to be able to tell them that you're doing well, don't you? And things are going good you know, and you're getting the work done and that. So that's actually been proven to, to increase motivation towards your course. If you if you tell people and you have that support. Um, another way is to start start a new plan, start with your new transitions. Um, you know, if you're used to getting up in the morning late, uh, turning on the TV, you know, maybe eating the wrong foods, you know, for breakfast, 
um, and things like that. The first thing, whenever you wake up in the morning, you'll be triggered to do these things straight away if you're used to them. So start new um, start new uh, transitions straight away. So first, when you wake up in the morning, get up early, shower, um, do a bit of study, then have a break, then have your lunch, then study a bit more and so on. And start with these, this new schedule, these new transitions as early as possible in the course and it will actually become much easier for you. Um, and uh, and yeah, and, and, and a point there as well and something that really works for me is if if you're doing something that you're not very keen on, but you add something that you enjoy doing with it, it can be easier. So what I mean by that is if you're studying, if you're able to listen to your favourite music in the background, have relaxing music on in the background while you're studying, have maybe a favourite snack as a treat. Um, you know, ha- take time making a nice coffee and sit and really enjoy sipping that while studying or, you know, whatever your favourite um you know, a soft drink might be or, or, you know, whatever it is, if you're doing something that you really enjoy doing while you're while you're studying, that really helps as well. And then the final thing is rewards. Oxana, always have in your head that you're working towards a reward. But Jesus, um, I think I give myself too many rewards. <laughs> no, no, you can never give yourself too many rewards, Oxana. That's no, no, keep giving yourself those. Is that, have a Every- no- no harm. Every, every day is treat day in my house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm that, like, gosh, no you treat harm. yourself, it's grand. <laughs> but in your experience, though, Xana, like, if, if you do have something to look forward to, like, say if you finish, like, um, even if you finish a long webinar um, or, you know, if you finished a project or, or, or a presentation, if you had something to look forward to afterwards, didn't it increase your motivation a bit? I guess so, but I'd be the type of person that probably mute myself in the webinar and just have and my just have a treat anyway. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine as well, but that's what I mean. So to decrease the boredom, with you know, some webinars go on a long time, you have something that you enjoy doing with it. So that so that increases your motivation to do it. Do you know what I mean? You know what yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So reward. So you know. Yeah you know by you know li- listen to your favorite music spend time you know with with loved ones that you haven't seen in a while snuggle up with your family you know um whatever whatever reward like order something for your home order something online that you've been looking at for a while you know go out for your you know, order in your favorite meal go out for your meal whenever we're able to go out um just and ultimately you know when you finish your course, I would always say have your ultimate treat that you're really, really looking forward to. And that would be maybe a holiday, a weekend away or, you know, a holiday away somewhere, you know, obviously within within guidelines or whatever. But just have the ultimate treat then right at the end that 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 you look forward to as well. And all of these points has has been researched, Oxana, and have, you know, proven that they, they do increase motivation while studying. Um. So, look, that's it. I really hope that um, anybody listening out there has picked up even one point that that'll help you with with your motivation when you're finding it difficult and struggling any point of your life. Um, I hope I hope this podcast has helped. And that was Mary McGlynn on the topic of motivation. I'll catch you all again in January with season two with plenty more interesting guests and topics. Have a lovely summer. Goodbye for now.